Hello to you newcomers and welcome back subscribers. This is Big Baby Props and I'm the Big Baby. In today's video we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be working in Fusion 360, the modeling software that I use to create some of my 3D printable objects. What we'll be doing today is remodeling my Z6 rotary cannon from scratch. I modeled this a few months ago but just recently printed one off and there's a few updates I'd like to make to it to make it fit together a little better and make it quicker for printing. But instead of just remodeling this already finished model, I would figured I'd start from scratch and give you guys a bit of a tutorial on to how I designed it. One of the goals of this remodel is to make it uh, faster for printing. If we look at a cross section here, I can show you guys what I mean. So this is a like a split view of the model just right down the middle and there are some parts that are quite big specifically this main body object here you can see those walls are all solid and so the printer has to print the infill for that whole thing and after I printed off that object it was quite heavy and took a lot of time to print. So we're going to try and thin that out and make it a little bit uh, uh, more printer friendly. Something else was uh, some of the transition pieces like going from this main body here to some of the some of the, this cage. There's no real connection mechanism between them. Um, you would have to just glue them together and I'm hoping to get more of a, a friction fit for this so that once it's printed I can fit it together and it will stay together without glue. I'll use glue of course to you know keep it strong but I'd like for it to be able to fit together and then me be able to take it apart later. Something else that was bothering me was uh, the barrels look a little bit small they're designed right now to be used with a half inch wooden dowel but we're gonna up that up to maybe three quarters inches and see how it looks just so that the barrels look a little bit thicker this is gonna be a multi-part series so we'll probably take it a few chunks at a time maybe we'll do the main body first and then next we'll work on the cage and maybe the barrels and you know, I'll split it up into smaller portions. So, with that out of the way, let's get to modeling. So I've got a new workspace here. Nothing on the page yet. The first thing we're going to do is bring in some uh, reference images. These are very important when modeling anything so that you have an accurate representation of uh, both the details and the dimensions of the object. So we're going to bring in an attached canvas, select the front face, and for this I always try and pick just a flat image. This is going to help us get the profile of the object we're modeling. Um, I'll also bring in just another angle. I got all these images off the internet so we won't be modeling over this one so we can increase its opacity all the way. Now that we have our reference images in the next most important thing is to size your canvas before you start modeling. So for that we can look back at our old model and we can get like a point of reference to measure the distance from. So let's go from the back of this. Um, let's go to the tip of the barrels. That is 39 inches, almost 40 inches. So what we can do is create a sketch in the home plane. With, I'm going to hit the, uh, the L key to make a line. Let's just go with 40 inches. 
So now we need to adjust our canvas size to line up with that dimension. I think that was pretty close actually. So looks pretty good on that end. Maybe a little bit more. Let's go 975. Oops. I want to do 0 0.975. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So now I'm just going to bring that canvas back in the center and try and center it a little bit better as well. Ugh, now I've got canvases all over the place. So let me move these around and scale these. And I'll get rid of this sketch now that we're done with it. Okay, so first I think before you start any real project, you need a plan. So I want this to be extremely hollow so that we can fit electronics in it. And uh, similar to our old design, let me see. Our old design had this center rod that I was planning on attaching motors to that would spin the all of the barrels we're going to go with that same idea, extend it a little bit, and maybe give it a little less room in here so it doesn't wobble as much. And we need some support because there's going to be a lot of weight held on this little area here that might cause a lot of friction. So we're going to try and improve the design a little bit. We're also going to want to make the handle hollow enough so that we can configure it to rotate on a button press. So we're going to need wires and maybe a, a switch or a button up in there. So with any big project, I think the best approach is to just take it one chunk at a time so that it's easier to manage and less scary. So let's first take care of this big main body here. So I'm going to need to create a sketch. We'll put it on this face of the origin. Now what we're going to do is draw a line. So I'm going to go back to the line key and I'm going to place it right on the origin and just draw it down the middle and hit OK. We're also going to go the other way just so we have a nice center line through our object that we can reference in the future. Now we're going to sketch half of this body and we'll talk about why in just a minute. So we'll go up there, we'll say it stops about right here and go back down. So one of the nifty things about Fusion is if you go into the Create and Revolve tool this will take a profile such as this rectangle here and revolve it around an axis while creating an object. So all we need to do is select a profile here, which is our big rectangle, an axis, which is going to be our center line, and you can see it automatically built a nice cylinder for us. Um, you can change how full of a circle you want it to go we're going to need 360 oops 360 for a complete body okay that was pretty easy we've got a huge chunk of our object already built so now we can start refining this object a little bit so let's start adding some details let me hide this body so we get a little bit clearer view. We can see that this corner here kind of chamfers off a little bit. So we're going to want to do that. Let's bring our body back. And in this modify tool, there is a chamfer option. So we will select this edge of our cylinder and bring it in a little bit. 
this adds like a, it, well, a chamfer is basically a cutoff piece. So how far does this go? Not too far. But you can see that it is not a perfect 45 degree angle. That's what the chamfer tool defaults to. So we switched over to the two distances chamfer type to give it, it's got a much shallower cut on this axis compared to this one. So we'll want to try and recreate that. So we'll drag this oh, down to about there and maybe that to there. Hit OK. And now we've got a nice chamfer on our object. There. Not so bad. Let's bring the canvases back. Now we can also see that there are these cutouts. If we look at okay, some of the other images, we can see it's like a square just chopped out of there. So we'll try and mimic that. It looks like there's four at least. So we're going to do some cool stuff for that. Let's create a new sketch. But this time, let's do it on the end of our face. So in Fusion, you can add sketches to multiple faces. Um, some of the default faces are the origin. You know, this is, I think it's the X plane. The Y planes over here and the Z plane. But as you create objects, you will also create new planes, such as the end of our body here. So now anything we draw is going to try and stick itself to this end of the cylinder. So let's just add some lines. So I believe the chunks go all the way out to the edge and they cut in just a bit and it's a bit of a trapezoidal shape so I'll try that and we'll just end it in the middle and in order to get a perfect mirror we're going to go down to the sketch mirror select and select our two lines select our mirror line okay so let's add a line down the center first there now we can use our mirror and select the center line as the mirror line. And I'm going to hit T to trim away the center line. So we won't need it anymore. Now, something cool that we can do, instead of trying to get the proper angle all the way around, we can go to Sketch, Circular Pattern, select our four lines here, and select the center point and this will repeat that same um, design all the way around the circle. We can change it to do an angle so that it repeats maybe only 180 degrees of the way. You can see it fitting right now that we have a quantity of six so it's fitting six of these trapezoids along our angle. So that's pretty cool. Let's bring it down to four and go with a, let's just go with a full angle, see how that looks. Actually, let's bring it down. You know what, no, let's go full angle. Since we modeled it on the top there, it's going to look a little bit different. So let's look at our canvases again. So we can see one, two, at least. 
This one makes it look like there's one on the top as well, or that it just goes all the way around. But this one does not really look like that. So sometimes you have to make a decision yourself. Let's take our best shot at it. I think I'm just going to have it go maybe most of the way. I might cut out these bottom three. So this actually looks pretty good. Bring it down to seven. That looks like good spacing actually. And then I can take out No, let's leave it at 8. That way I can take out this bottom one for the handle later. We don't want it to interfere with that object. So we can select OK. That will duplicate our sketch all the way around. And I'm going to select T to trim away this last one here that we don't need. OK. I'm going to hit Stop Sketch. And now we've got our cutting plane. So I'm going to hit extrude, select all these profiles that we just made, and we're going to use them to cut away from the main body. So if you select this, this arrow here, you can select how far you want them to cut. Uh, let's go all the way to the end of the chamfer. Select cut, and hit OK, and that will cut out our sketch out of the object. Now that's looking good. OK, next we want to get these details, these ribs or whatever they are, and for that we're going to do something a little bit similar to what we did for the back side. So we need our bodies back and we're going to actually let's hide the bodies. We're going to add a sketch, put it on the home plane and I'm going to need a good center line. So again, we'll just go through there. Yes. And let's Start drawing. So, let's see, it's got five ribs, so we'll Try and make it the same. Let's just go with the 45 degree angle. Make it nice and easy for us. Have our line. And then a, yes, a 135 angle. But we want it to line up with our other line. So, similar to the circular pattern, there's also a rectangular pattern that we're going to use for these three lines so that we have the same exact dimensions all the way through. So you can either go in a rectangle, I'll show you here, you can go up and up, and that makes sort of a grid, or we can just go on a straight line. So let's increase the quantity to five and we'll space these out so that they kind of match up with the canvas. Now they don't connect, which is fine, but that looks pretty good. So now we can just go in and add lines connect these guys so that they're all one happy plane. And now we will go up and we'll match it with this point. If you want to match it with the point, 
you just go over to it and you can see that dotted line that's following it if you drag it all the way back that will make sure that the two lines are equal okay let's extend this guy a little bit as well and let's connect it so now we've got a nice profile here it's one in fully enclosed loop so we can use it to cut away from our main body like we did with this stuff so let's go to create instead of extrude we're going to revolve it works the same way as how we created the cylinder we select our profile and then we select our axis which is our center line that we drew and it's going to try and cut away from the entire cylinder because our profile here intersects with our object so it knows that I'm trying to cut so let's go back evolve now we can see from our canvases that it doesn't go all the way maybe 180 degrees around the circle or around the object so we can modify that right here go down to 90 degrees and we want it to appear on both sides inside the canvas we want it to appear on both sides so let's select symmetric that's going to cut away from both sides for us and look really nice okay that's looking good add our canvases back hide our bodies show our bodies we might have a little bit too many cuts down on the chamfer here but that's okay you can fix it if you want to I'll be moving on. Actually, that might go a little bit lower than 90 degrees. It's hard to judge if your reference image is a little bit at an angle. I think it's okay because you can see that this is like the ammo box it's tilted towards us just a little bit so this is going to look a little bit further down than it might actually be so like I said at the beginning of the video the purpose of this remodel is to make it you know better for electronics and better for printing and better for fitting together so right now this is a solid object. If I tried to print this on the printer, it would take probably 90 hours to finish just because it would have to add infill to this whole thing. If we tried to print it like this, it would fill the whole thing up with whatever infill percentage you set. And even at a 1% infill percentage, this is a lot. Plus, it has no room for electronics. So, we are going to want to fix that. Let's go to our Modify drop-down and select Shell. Now, if we look at the Shell tool, it removes material from a part interior, creating a hollow cavity with walls of a specified thickness. So, we're going to select Shell, and let's select this face here. It's going to instantly hollow out the object right now it's at half an inch wall thickness let's hide the origin and we can see we now have an inside of our model it goes in half an inch from all directions so that's going to include the parts that we cut out which is fine but half an inch is still pretty thick we might want to drag this down to point to five inches that's a lot thinner it's going to print a lot faster but it's also you know going to keep most of its strength you know 
a lot of the strength of the object depends on your printer settings so we'll be able to make it strong enough when we go to print it but also keeping the material used at a pretty low amount so we're gonna hit OK and keep that measurement so we've been going for a while I think this is a good stopping point in the next episode we'll cover some more parts of the blaster maybe take on this centerpiece we also need to make sure that the pieces connect together so we'll probably build a connector piece in this big open hole that we just created and yeah we'll go from there it's pretty much a just a casual tutorial so I'll see you guys in the next one hopefully